Hi, in this video we'll work out a few examples of unique conversion calculation. Before we start, there are some examples of unique conversion calculation done in the textbook. Uh, it's in section 1.2, physical quantities and units, under unit conversion and dimensional analysis. So please do take a look at it. This video is meant to supplement what is already in the textbook. All right, let's get started. So we are going to work out three different examples. The first example will be length conversion. For the second example, we will finish up example 1.1 that's in the textbook. Well, by finish, I mean there was a calculation that I wish they did, but they didn't, so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> For the third example, we are going to do conversion of miles per hour to meters per second. This will be very useful in general because most of us have our intuitive sense of speed based on miles per hour. But in SI units, meters per second is the SI unit of speed. So we need to start building up intuition for how fast is just too, too fast. All right, let's get started. First, with the length conversion. Um, let me do a fairly useful example of length scale. So if we think about how high is the atmosphere, the typical number that we can throw around that you will see later on in the semester is the atmospheric height of about 10 kilometers or so. The actual atmosphere actually extends much above that, but at some point the air gets so thin that I'm just compressing it all down to 10 kilometers. So if the atmospheric height is 10 kilometers, well, in the customary units or English or imperial units, what is 10 kilometers? So the question is, what is the 10 kilometers in, let's say, miles or in feet? Those are the two uh, fairly large length scales that we should be able to convert this into. So we start out with the number 10 kilometers. And what we now need is a conversion factor. What a conversion factor is, it's essentially number one, but you write it in a very specific way to convert one unit into the other. So for example, we are starting out with a unit of kilometers. So we want to convert it to miles. So the conversion factor that we are going to build, it's going to have kilometers in the denominator. This makes it so that after we do all the calculation, the kilometers will cancel out. But you can't just uh, divide things by a new number without changing things. That's what the numerator is for. We are going to put in a physical quantity there that is equal to one kilometer so that all we did was we multiplied by a factor one. So we didn't change anything. All we changed was unit. Now this is where I need to look up the conversion factor. Fortunately, your textbook has these conversion factors at the very end under useful information. This is like a back of a physical textbook. And then you scroll down, you will see a section for SI units. And that's where I see these factors relating inches to centimeter, foot to uh, meter, and mile to kilometer. Hmm. So I see that the conversion factor I have doesn't have one kilometer, so I'll need to change a little bit what I write. So, but what I can say is one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometer. So if I write this fraction, I'll be just multiplying by one. So the fraction is one mile per 1.609 kilometer. And as our goal was, kilometers cancel out, only mile remains. So the final number we get will be in units of mile. Now I can't really do the 
10 divided by 1.609 in my head. So I'll use a calculator. So 10 divided by 1.609. Alright, 6.22. Um, with the significant figures, I will say this. In this class, if you keep three significant figures most of the time, you'll be fine. If you want to be extra careful, you can keep four significant figures. But more than that is really unnecessary. So here, I'm going to keep three. So 6.22 is what I want. So 6.22 miles is the atmospheric height in miles. All right. Let's go through the second part more quickly. We want the answer in feet. So we start off with the same number, 10 kilometers. And I remember from looking at the useful information earlier that I'm not given kilometers to feet conversion. So uh, I am given feet to meter conversion. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to convert twice. I will need two factors of conversion factors to get my final answer in terms of feet. The first factor is easy. I need to convert kilometer to meters. And this is really why we use SI units in sciences. It's really easy to convert from larger length to a shorter length. Kilo means thousand. So one kilometer is a thousand meters. I don't have to look up anything to know that. I, it's once you have the prefixes memorized, then you have this memorized. All right, uh, I don't actually remember what the meter to fit conversion was. So let me look back at the useful information. All right, so the meter to fit conversion is one foot per 0 0.3048 meters. So one foot per 0 0.3048 three zero four eight meters then you see that all the units we don't want cancel out kilometer cancels out kilometer meter cancels out meter so we are only left with the fit which is the unit we wanted so um, I still can't do this in my head so I will use calculator 10 multiplied by thousand divided by 0 0.3048 32,808 um, so keeping three significant figures this would be 32,800 feet that's it that's the first example converting uh, length between an SI unit to uh, English customary or imperial unit. All right, let's uh, move on to the second case. We want you to finish example 1.1. So example 1.1 has, suppose you drive 10 kilometers in 20 minutes. What is the speed in kilometers per hour and meters per second? What I noticed was missing was uh, there's no miles per hour. That's the speed a lot of us are familiar with. So we should really have that. So let me do part C, calculating this average speed in miles per hour. So the part C to example 1.1 that I'm adding is calculating 10 kilometers per 20 minutes in miles per hour. So we go through this same as last time. So we have our number, 10 kilometers per 20 minutes. And we are going to multiply by conversion factors. We have two units that we are trying to get rid of, um, kilometers and minutes. So we are going to need two conversion factors. Each of them are factors of one that is designed to cancel out the unit we don't want and retain the unit that we do want. Let's get rid of minute first. That's the easier one. So um, I want to cancel out minutes. So on the numerator, I need the minutes on top. I want to convert it to hour. So on the denominator, I need hour here. 
And here, I'm just thinking about, okay, how many hours is equal to how many minutes? Well, there are 60 minutes in one hour. So that's our first conversion factor that will get rid of unit of minutes and give us the unit of hour that we want. For the second factor, I have to look up the number again because I never have this memorized. So going back to useful information, um, I want kilometers to mile conversion. So one mile is 1.609 kilometers. So one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometer. Making sure we put them in the correct places so that this kilometer in the numerator will be canceled out by this kilometer in the denominator and will be left with a mile. So the unit that we are left with is miles per hour or MPH. Um, for the numbers, I have to use calculator again. So <laughs> it's uh, 10 divided by 20 multiplied by 60 divided by 1.609. And that's equal to 18.6, 18.6 miles per hour. All right, that was easy enough. Now, let me move on to the third example. So we want to convert a number in miles per hour to meters per second. Let me come up with a number that's going to be familiar to you. So if you're driving around in a residential neighborhood, then a typical speed limit might be 30 miles per hour. So let's convert 30 miles per hour to whatever it is in meters per second. And this will also give you some useful quick way to convert from miles per hour to meters per second. It's actually fairly easy once you know the numbers. So, so we are converting 30 miles per hour to meters per second. So it looks like we will need two conversion factors again, miles to meters and hour to seconds. Let me do hour to seconds first. That's the easier one. So I have one hour on the numerator and on the denominator, I want seconds. So it's a question of how many seconds in an hour? If you have it memorized as 3,600, Great, good for you. If not, this is the consideration you have to go through. Okay, how many seconds in a minute? Well, 60 seconds in a minute. How many minutes in an hour? 60 minutes in an hour. So the number of seconds is going to be 60 times 60 seconds. And I can just do that in the calculator later. All right. And I need miles to meter conversion, which once again, I never have memorized. So I'll need to look it up. So, under useful information, one mile is 1.609 kilometers, or in meters, it'll be 1,609 meters. So, let me write that. So, miles on the denominator to cancel out, miles on the numerator, meters on top to get meters. So, one mile is equal to 1,609 meters. Good. So you can see that all the units that we don't want cancel out. Hour cancels out. Miles cancels out. We are left with meters per second. And we bring our calculator to finish this calculation. 30 divided by 60. And because of the way this calculator works, I just have to divide again by 60 and then multiply by 1609. So I get a number of 13 or 13.4 meters per second. 13.4. So this is a fairly accurate exact conversion. 30 miles per hour is a 13.4 meters per second. Now, there's a kind of quicker way to do this calculation so that you can do it in your head. So this 13.4, it's very close to 15. 
Now if it were 15, then we would be saying 30 miles per hour to 15 meters per second. It's a simple division by 2. So if you just simply want you to get a quick sense of how does a number in meters per second relate to a number in miles per hour, it's a simple factor of 2. So you take the number in miles per hour, divide it by 2, that will give you a number in meters per second. So if you are speeding at 100 miles per hour, then you're moving at approximately 50 meters per second. So, um, so that's the last of the examples I want you to look at. Uh, let me point out one free tool that you have access to that's going to help out with the homework. Um, I guess I leave it up to your judgment how often to use it, but it's good to have around as a way to check your answers. So let me show it to you. This tool is something called Ulfram Alpha. You can access it by going to www.ulframalpha.com. It's a free resource. There are some features that you can only access with a pro account, but I don't think we do anything in this class that you really need it for. This uh, search engine is aware of units. So you can have it actually do the uh, conversion for you. So let's take the first example. 10 kilometers in miles. Well, 6.137 miles. Or in feet, um, 32,800 feet. Um, or the other example, uh, 10 kilometer per 20 minutes in miles per hour. Mm, I might have to hit enter for this one. Let's try that. So it tells you how it understood your request to make sure this looks correct. Then if this looks correct, then this answer ought to be right, 18.6 miles per hour. And if you go back in the video, you will see that's what we calculated. And finally, well, let's try the 100 miles per hour in meters per second. 100 miles per hour in meters per second is about 40, 45 or close enough to 50 meters per second. So this is a very useful tool. Now, um, it's a question of, <laughs> um, I do want you to know uh, how to convert some units. So I do, it's, this is like long division. So people teach you long division in middle school, elementary school, high school. <laughs> um, even though you are most often going to use calculator because there is a value in knowing how it's done if you didn't have these advanced tools. All from alpha is the same thing. So if you just need the answer, you can use this to get the answer. But I strongly encourage you to learn how to do this by hand and use this tool to just double check your answers. So that's all the examples I have. Um, um, I guess please get started on the homework early. And if any questions come up, please contact me. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Bye.